Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Ben, and welcome to this pixel art analysis video. In this video, we're going to be analyzing the character from my action RPG series, and I'll link to that in this video and in the description. When starting off, I like to start with basic shapes. I've pretty much got a rectangle here, and I've made a slightly larger area at the top to indicate the head size. After getting the basic shapes in, I start adding a few details like hands, cheeks, legs, and ears. Once I have those details in, I start adding some basic regions to the sprite. I've got a head region, a torso region, the legs region, and the feet. I add some details to the face like eyes and a nose, and I use a lighter tone to indicate the eyebrows here, the bottom half of the face, and the hands. These are areas of the character that are going to stand out significantly from the other parts because they're a lot brighter and they're going to be defining features for this character. Making sure the hands are easily visible is also important for our animation. We'll get into that later, but it really helps with the readability of the character. I start adding color. I chose orange because our character is a fox, and for the shirt, I chose blue because it is a complementary color to orange and helps the fox stand out. I start with a little bit of basic shading. I take the base colors that I had and I hue shift them. For the orange, I shifted towards red, so you can see that this darker orange has a lot more red in it. And for the blue, I hue shifted towards purple, so it's a little bit more of a purple color. At this point, I start adding a few more details, and this is a very experimental time. It's similar to the second image that we have up here. In this image, I experiment quite a bit to try and get the details right adding pixels here and there. I added a couple under the eyebrows to add a little bit of shading there, a couple on the cheeks to give the indication of whiskers, and a few other little places to help with the overall shape of the character like in the boots. I wanted the character to have a cape so I added a nice little cape to the character because he's the hero of our story. I used a purple color for the cape and added a nice red color so I hue shifted towards red as I got to the brighter tones and added that in as a highlight to the cape to give it a little bit more shape. Part of the reason that I decided to go with red for the cape is because a large portion of this game is designed around grass. If you remember in the last video in the series, we did the grass background. It's got a nice green tone. So adding a red cape to the main character helps the character pop on the screen. The next step is the process for creating the character in the different directions that they will be moving in. We'll start by creating the character facing in the upwards direction. This is usually the easiest because you don't have to to make a lot of changes to your base sprite. First, I remove the face and a lot of the details on the face. This makes it feel like it's the back of the head for our character. I change the ears a little bit to make it feel like it's the back of the ears as well. And then I remove the body and just place this red color all over the base of the cape. And you can see it already feels like the back of our character at this point with only those two main changes. Finally, I add a few more details to the cape here to indicate the shading and the way that it's hanging on the character. And this gives us the finished sprite for our character facing in the upwards direction. It's time to do our character facing to the right. Here's the character at a complete side profile, and you can see that I've kept a lot of the proportions the same. The character's height is the same, the boot is the same height, the legs are the same height, the torso is basically the same height, and the head, the eye is in the same place to the other, so our character looks like it's turning around a pole here. Keeping these sizes exactly the same can really help you to find the places for your pixels. It helps it to feel like it's the exact same character, just turned a little bit. After getting the profile right, I like to add in the perspective. We add in the back leg and the back arm. I usually have these shaded using the darker values and I raise them up by a pixel to add a little bit of perspective. You can see I have it in the ear as well in the previous image where I've got the back ear darker and a little bit farther down. And finally, I add the cape back in and it is actually pretty similar to just half of the other cape that we had before, but I do have it come up over the shoulders of the character to show that form and where the cape comes over the character's arm. For the character facing in the left direction, I just take the right direction and mirror it, and that completes our character here. Of course, we don't have the animations yet, but we've got the base character with a pretty good design facing in all directions. That will make it a lot easier when we get to the point of animating. And I'm going to do a separate video 
out for that. So we'll be doing that in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll leave a link to the Godot Action RPG series that has this character in it. If you'd like to learn more about creating your own games using the Godot engine, you can check out that link. It's a free series here on YouTube. And I will talk to you all later.